children of God, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today is Mother's Day, and we thank God for all the wonderful women in our lives, with special thanks to God for our mothers. They were the first to shower us with love, and to be for us the embodiment of God's love. Mothers are the keepers of the family lore and the guardians of the family circle. Thanks be to God for our mothers, living here or living in glory, who pray like Jesus for the unity of their children. It might seem that our focus this day on the book of Revelation is terribly incongruous, for here is a book full of the very things from which our mothers seek to protect us. Devastating horsemen, beasts and dragons, plagues and war, and great deceptions. But it may well be that the parallel between Mother's Day and the book of Revelation is much clearer than we might at first suppose. There are women in the book of Revelation, both wicked and righteous, evil and good. And so it is in the world. And mothers want their children to be able to discern the difference between those women and men who are good and those who are evil, lest their children fall into bad company and come to bad ends. Christian mothers, want their children to learn to worship the triune God and not to be led astray by false gods, idols, or deceivers. 666, six, six. the Antichrist. Who is that? People have played with these numbers over the generations and have come up with all kinds of amazing answers to that. Back in the time of the Apostles, the Emperor Nero was identified as 666, and numerology somehow got that name and those letters to come around. Well, he did kill St. Peter and St. Paul and wreaked havoc in the church, so he was rather anti-Christ-like. In the 1500s, these same numbers were twisted around to identify another person, identify as the Antichrist, Martin Luther. Well, we might beg to differ about that, but some thought that they somehow spoke of him. In the last century, Adolf Hitler was one crowned with these numbers. And I suppose today that continues to happen all over the world, including in the political process, where we might identify the one we don't want with the number 666. Surely this must be Antichrist. A clear understanding of these numbers will protect us from all that would lead us away from God. What do they mean? They mean this. In Eastern numerology, the number seven is the number of divinity. The number six is the number of humanity. When you repeat a number, you intensify that number, you emphasize that statement. So who is 666? It says in Revelation, this calls for wisdom and understanding, for this number is a human number. And that's exactly the point. Any person who comes and says, you should worship me, I am divine is in fact the Antichrist. God is seven, 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 but anyone who claims to be divided is not, you would say to them, you are not God, you are human, you are human, you are human. You are a pretender to the throne. So who does it identify? All sorts of people throughout history, great and small, who claim somehow that they are worthy of worship. And it's also true of things like money and fame. 
They masquerade as being divine, but they are not divine. They also are six, 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 human, 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 unworthy of worship. I believe that mothers want their children to understand that there is only one worthy of our worship and adoration that's not even mother, it's God. Well then what about Judgment Day and Final Reckoning that fill the pages of Revelation? I believe that every mother wants her children to understand that actions have consequences, some minor and some major. My guess is that every one of us, on more than one occasion, had a moment of reckoning with our mothers. Our mothers who seemed to have eyes in the back of their heads, who knew what we were doing and we couldn't figure out how they knew that. Our mothers who, when it got too quiet, knew to come and check. And the day of reckoning would come. And maybe the reckoning was going to bed with no supper or having time out. But somehow or other, there were consequences for actions. It's true throughout life. And it will be true at the end of life that there are consequences for the actions whether good or evil. Mothers want their children to know that, to be sensitive and alert. The book of Revelation calls us to put our trust in the Lamb, in Jesus Christ, who alone is able to open the seven seals and who is seated on the throne and reigns forever. Only Jesus is worthy, no one else, male or female, Mother, father, child, only the Lamb is worthy to open the seals. In the 1970s, I attended the Lutheran Teachers Convention, and one of the speakers was Dr. Arnold Kuntz, the Missouri Synod District President for Southern California. In the midst of his talk, he kind of went off a little bit and said, I've been thinking a lot about Revelation. And you know, it doesn't give me great confidence simply to know that God is on the throne. God who is perfect. Because he said, what if for the briefest of moments God forgot his love for us? We would be obliterated. What gives me confidence, he said, is to know that the Lamb is on the throne. The very one who gave himself for us reigns forever and we can be completely at peace and confident in Him. So then, when all is said and done on this Mother's Day, what are we to make of the book of Revelation? It is a book written in code to Christians who are suffering and dying for their faith. Written in code so that it in fact would be delivered. If John, exiled on the island of Patmos, had written a letter to the Christians saying, I know you're being persecuted by the Roman government, but they will be overthrown. Do you think that letter would be delivered? So he writes this letter full of all kinds of wild imagery, and I'm sure his jailers probably said, this man's gone mad. I guess we can deliver it because it doesn't mean anything, except that it meant everything to those who read it. The book of Revelation is a call to faithfulness and to endurance. It is 